Hello everybody, welcome back to another Friday episode of Trucker Money. This is number 32 for the week of December 14th through the 18th. Uh, this, if you're new here, it's where we talk about money, finance, personal finance, debt, taxes, all things money outside of trucking. Try to stay away from trucking on Fridays and uh, talk about you know everything, building a life outside of trucking. It's not financial advice, just me sharing my personal journey and we throw ideas back and forth and, and um, try to make each other's lives better, I guess. So I was listening to a show on the radio yesterday, I guess it was, and they were talking about depression and money in general. And they pointed out an interesting statistic from people who keep track of such things that people that own rental real estate have significantly less depression than people who do not own rental real estate. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So I guess if you're feeling blue, just uh, call up your realtor and say, hey, let's go look at some rental properties. I don't know, maybe that'll give you a pick me up better than some medications, who knows? I'm not a doctor. I just thought it was interesting. And uh, Robinhood, the online brokerage, or the app-based brokerage that I talk about from time to time, give my opinion on, just settled a $65 million lawsuit with the United States government for, in relation to, uh, number one, their outages. When, remember I talked about uh, when the markets were crashing, the Robinhood servers went down, so people could not get in to their accounts and sell positions or buy or whatever they wanted to do. They had rode these things, some of them all the way to the bottom because Robinhood crashed. And also for breach of fiduciary responsibility and uh, they call it taking advantage of new investors. Basically by making their platform like a video game and not like taking it seriously and also uh, giving people access to options that had no business engaging in possibly the riskiest form of investing that there is or one of the riskiest I should say because um, you can lose more money than than you put in so that's not good I mean it's your money you work hard for it take it serious protect it they're obviously not concerned with protecting your money so you definitely be concerned about protecting your own money now let's get into the passive income dividend portfolio what happened there for the week I had no dividend increases or cuts I've had quite a few here recently so it's probably gonna taper off that's okay I'm okay with that uh, who paid this week well this is the week of the year that I wait for right you've heard me say before that the third month of every quarter is the best for me as far as we're talking about passive income and dividend income here and December in particular and here's why this is this is the week uh, I wait for all year long. I guess the song is right. December, it is the most wonderful time of the year, huh? I guess that annoying Christmas music is right once in a while. 3M paid, Stag Industrials. Uh, Royal Dutch Shell paid, uh, Realty Income paid, Duke Energy. Wait, did I talk about Duke last week? I can't remember. Duke Energy paid last week or this week. I'm tired, I can't remember. And Prudential. Uh, interesting thing. Here, one of the stocks in the portfolio I, I forgot to mention is IBM is going to be splitting the company. Uh, they have a new uh, person in charge there, and he's recommending they split the company into like one section is like artificial intelligence and then some cloud computing. I don't know how it's all going to split, but once again, splits like that sometimes unlock value. It did well in the case of Pfizer, so I'm pretty happy about that. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, now. What I'm so happy about is this week of the year, some of my mutual funds pay out. And one of them that paid was the Fidelity Small Cap Fund and then Fidelity Balanced Fund, FBALX. Now they paid three times. They paid a dividend, a long-term capital gain, and a short-term capital gain. So that's a pretty good payout there. But the big one for me is my largest holding overall is Fidelity Contra Fund. They paid their long-term capital gain, the big one, and then they pay again in February, it'll be a much smaller one. But I figured out that the distribution, you can't. I can't say that like they pay 5% or they pay 4%. It's different every year based on how the assets do inside the mutual fund. This year's payout was equal to 7.5% um, distribution. I'll call it distribution, it's not a dividend, it was a long-term capital gain. Uh, I'm not going back and counting the previous February here. That was, 
I don't remember what that was. But just this one distribution was a 7.5% return for the year. That does not include how much it went up in value. That's just a payout. So that's huge. And uh, I'm really happy about that. That's going to be continue to be like the anchor of my entire portfolio for years to come. And yet another reason I like Fidelity, I like that one particular fund. For me, maybe it doesn't work for you. What did I buy this week? Well, I bought some more Prudential, PPL Corporation, General Mills, and I finally finished up my Campbell's position. Um, what I mean by that is there was a certain amount of Campbell's I wanted to own, and I reached that goal. So I don't know if I'll buy, I didn't add that to my list last week for 2021 investments that I wanted to, but I might put that in there if uh, the price comes down some more. They got their they got their stuff together after that reorganization and they're looking good. So I might go back and add that into my, my 2021 kind of like safety goals that I wanted. So that's all that kind of took place this week in there. Now let's talk about 2020 last minute tax planning. We're kind of getting down to crunch time here at the end of the year. And I'm kind of hearing people saying, well, geez, I don't know how much I'm gonna owe. I'm in trouble here for taxes. Maybe people's years turned out better than we thought because because the year started so bad. So many people assumed that the whole year was gonna be bad, it was gonna be nothing, they weren't gonna make any money, so they didn't plan on paying any taxes. Now things recovered, things are hot, you're in a pickle because you're making all this money, and some people are panicking. So let's just talk about some quick last minute tax strategies you could employ. Again, I'm not a tax advisor or a CPA, Always check with your with your tax person. In fact, that's one of the things I recommend you do right off the bat. See your accountant one last time before the end of the year. It might cost you a hundred bucks. It might cost you two hundred bucks. It's worth it. I mean, if you can save thousands and thousands of dollars in taxes just by one last consultation with them, definitely do it. That's that's some of the best advice of the world. Some you can get from your from your CPA. Um, next thing I would say is. Sit that while you're with them. Sit down and review your depreciation schedule. See where you're at. Make sure you're not, you know, so that you know if you're out of depreciation and you you know to expect that surprise of of owing more. These things are easier to swallow if you know what's coming rather than you know I got my taxes done in March and oh crap I owe all this money. It's better to know now. You can prepare for it. Next thing I'd say is sit down and reevaluate your equipment needs. Are you thinking you're going to buy a new? trailer in February or truck anyways. I'm not saying you should go get new equipment just to get the tax write off. But if you have to have it and you're going to do it anyways, you were just thinking about doing it after the first of the year. Now you find out you owe a lot of taxes. Maybe you want to do it yet this year. Um, so nothing, another thing you can pencil out with your accountant. Um, see if you qualify for an HSA would be the next thing. It's getting kind of late maybe to get that done by the end of the year. But maybe not. Depends on your personal situation. But uh, HSAs, I'm, I'm getting into an HSA here. A HSA is a health savings account. It can be part of your health insurance. They are a great, great plan, and they can really help save you uh, tax money in addition to it. So look into that. You can pre-buy supplies or parts. If you think you need tires in March, you could go buy them now stick them in your garage sit on them take them in march have them put on you know if you're gonna get them anyways there's there's a couple of years where i went i was gonna owe a ton of money and i knew like even like the next fall a year from then i was gonna need drive tires so i went out and i bought a whole set of drive tires and like four steer tires they keep i mean as long as you're not leaving them sit out in the crappy weather you know keep them inside protect them they're gonna be just fine um uh, as long as you know you're going to use them anyway. Insurance, you can you could prepay, like if you're an independent or whatever, and you pay all your own insurance policy. Typically, most people make payments on that throughout. You know, equal payments, twelve equal payments through the year. If you owe money on your insurance policy, there's nothing to stop you from prepaying that, paying out the policy. Say you're up for renewal in June, we'll just pay the whole policy this year. You can take the deduction this year. Yeah, all these things you're gonna say, well, I'm spending all this money this year, well, what about next year? Well, we're talking about like 
emergency planning here last minute because you didn't do anything this year take care now next year then you have 12 months to plan and prepare on a personal level make sure your property taxes are paid in full before the end of the year then you can take that that full amount um, this year yet and everybody's situation is going to be a little bit different on that like if you have a home office you're going to take some of them taxes towards your business income and uh I don't claim to know what your personal situation is. You may be able to deduct them or not on your personal taxes. It's something you gotta talk with the professional about. Everybody's situation is gonna be different. Something that a lot of people forget, and, and this is the last point I'll make, is you can delay your receivables. Like if you're an independent, maybe you just wanna slow bill some people. You don't wanna quite bill them out before the end of the year. And now it's getting kinda of late for this, but you can also call, like if you have somebody, a broker, you got to trust them. You got to know them. You got to have a relationship with them. I wouldn't do this for somebody that you don't know and know that they're going to pay you. Just say, hey, could you just hold that invoice till after the first? I've done this before. Um, and people are like, yeah, no big deal. We'll just, I'll just set it over here and I won't process it until the first. And then they do. And then you get your money in January. Or if you're leased onto a carrier, just call your carrier and say, listen, you know, for whatever reason, just, can you just like not pay me for the rest of the year? I understand we only got, you know, depending on your pay date, you only have one or two more paychecks coming, but every, bit, every little bit can make a difference if you're if you're really in a pickle. Just say, hey, can you hold that money and just please don't pay me until, until after the first of the year. I'd really appreciate that. Nine times out of ten, I don't see why they wouldn't do it. It makes no difference to them. So just some just throwing out some things there. If you're if you're at the end of the year here and in a panic, to help you out a little bit. And uh, if you like this kind of thing, check out the videos on the screen now. Hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any videos. And we'll see you next time.